Joining us now for more on this is Richard Goldberg, senior advisor at the Foundation for Defense of Democracy, speaking to us from Chicago. And we should point out that as a senior advisor to the former Illinois governor, Bruce Rayner, he drafted one of the first anti-BDS laws in the nation back in 2015. Richard, great to have you on. Uh, so we know the um, Gilad Erdan, the Israeli ambassador to the, to the UN, has sent a letter to 50 governors asking them to enforce now. Uh, so, some of those states have anti-BDS legislation on the books, but maybe explain to us exactly how that works. We know there are variations in different states. What about the law that you helped draft? How could that be used against uh, Ben & Jerry's or its parent company, Unilever? Yeah, thanks for having me. Important question, important to understand how these laws work. About 33 states have now adopted some form of an anti-BDS law. Most of them have to do with contracting. So if you have state contracts with uh, Unilever, the parent company of Ben & Jerry's in this case, those contracts would have to be suspended. Twelve of those states, like Illinois, which was the first, have to divest their pension funds uh, from Unilever. That's the biggest uh, piece of this uh, as far as leverage from the state over Unilever and over Ben & Jerry's here. Uh, we're talking at, at least uh, from six states of the 12 that have pension divestment laws upwards of half a billion dollars of direct holdings in Unilever. Unilever's quarterly earnings call tomorrow morning, by the way, not a good time to uh, have to tell your investors that we've just cost the company half a billion dollars at least. All right, so uh, now let's look at the realistic polit political side of this. Do you expect those states to have, that have these books on the law to try and enforce it? And uh, what would they, uh, how would they just go about starting that process? So for a lot of these states, uh, they have investment policy boards that have been established or the governor's office uh, gives direction uh, for the pension funds to take action. Usually they have companies, uh, research firms that will bring press clippings to their attention and say, we now have evidence uh, that there is a company like Unilever and Ben & Jerry's that are now engaging in what is called a boycott of Israel as defined by the laws. And at that point, the wheels are in motion, required by statute in each of these states, and the pension systems merely take them out, uh, divest their direct holdings, and inform their uh, fund managers to uh, look out for Unilever being in indirect holdings via index funds and other mutual funds. Right. Now, we can expect, perhaps, if this happens, a... a legal challenge by Ben and Jerry's or Unilever. I want you to discuss that. I know there was a case in Arkansas where a court did rule against that state's anti-BDS legislation, but I think in the, there was a, it was somewhat different. Uh, uh, companies actually had to proactively sign an anti-BDS pledge, so that might be a somewhat different precedent here. Yeah, there's really not going to be much of a legal case uh, that Ben & Jerry's or Unilever can bring here. Unilever is in a very, very tough spot uh, with its shareholders. Unfortunately, they put themselves in. Uh, the Constitution, uh, the Supreme Court has upheld the constitutionality of uh, divestment laws from state pensions. It's the state's money. They get to invest how they want. On the procurement side, we've seen some challenges where there was a bit of an overreach in some of the state laws applying the laws to individuals, sole proprietors, where you start mixing freedom of speech and its constitutional protection with the BDS uh, laws. And so if you're talking about a larger corporation and uh, state contracts, uh, that has not been challenged and is unlikely to be. Right. Now, uh, uh, we heard the uh, Ned Price from the uh, State Department the other day uh, speak out and said that this administration, the Biden administration, is against a boycott moves against Israel uh, over its policies, though he didn't specifically call out, he was asked, and he did not call out Ben and Jerry's uh, um, uh, com the, the, the company by name. Uh, what, what's your response to that? Uh, because we could expect that this issue might become a point of contention, at least in some elements in the Democratic Party, who have spoken out against these anti-BDS laws. Listen, I think it's a good thing for the State Department under a Biden administration to speak out forcefully against BDS. This is a bipartisan opposition to BDS. It is way outside the mainstream of Americans, regardless of political affiliation. So for that, it's very important. Uh, if we find any evidence that perhaps the Palestinian Authority had written a letter or urged Ben and Jerry's to take this action, before they did, there could be federal anti-boycott laws that are implicated, and then the Department of Commerce would have to launch an investigation, various tax and export control laws that would apply. 
but, but bottom line is this is likely something that will be handled by states, uh, not by the federal government. Uh, so from a State Department view, at least a very strong message opposing the BDS movement and putting investors on notice that the company has made a very poor decision. Right, now I believe you mentioned it was 33 states, so there are still several states that have not put such laws on. How do you expect this move uh, by Ben & Jerry's to affect the political debate about these BDS laws, whether it maybe will advance some in some of these other states or cause some to th rethink them? Listen, I think this could be a catalyzing event. There's 20 states that have anti-BDS laws on contracting, but not on the pension divestment. Those states should think about expanding their laws to pension divestment as well. So it's not just 12 states, but many others that will be divesting their holdings from Unilever. And for other states that haven't taken action, New York could go farther and pass a pension divestment law. California could do a pension divestment law. I really think this could be a moment where there's such an overreach by very extreme uh, progressives uh, out of touch with the American mainstream on support for Israel here at Ben & Jerry's uh, with the Unilever executive team that allowed it to happen and is complicit in this. Uh, I think there could be a big bash backlash in the United States. Right. Well, I think we are seeing that backlash uh, so far somewhat on the sort of political and consumer level. And it looks like this is heading to some kind of legal arena as well. We'll see how it develops. Uh, Rich Gober from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Uh, thank you for joining us on I-24 News. Thanks for having me.